What's up, everybody? This is episode 34 of Hoops Talk with Dave's Joint. Shout outs to everybody that's shown support so far. Um, if you haven't seen my episodes, check it out on YouTube, Facebook, and IGTV. But without further ado, I give you a special guest today. He, he, had, he won two city and state championships at Rice High School, played at Bowie State University. I give you Mr. Kevin Bell. Mm-hmm. Kev, thank you for coming on to talk to me, you know, and share your story. I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you having me on, Dave. Indeed. So let's get started. Um, so um, when did you start playing basketball? Uh, my mom put the ball in my hands. I was maybe nine, nine years old. I was kind of tall for my age, so uh, in my neighborhood where I grew up at in Douglas Projects, um, you know, in my age bracket, like I said, I was kind of tall, so everybody always could dribble the ball. And, like, that was, like, probably the worst part of my game at that time, you know, ball handling is like, when you first playing ball, that's, like, the hardest thing to do is ball handling. Everybody could throw up shots and make them, at, you know, I'm at that age, but ball handling was something that always was like, right, I got to get this down, and I can dribble the ball real good at that age, so in my height, so in about nine, like nine, nine going on 10 years old. Mm. So talk about growing up in Harlem and what was the basketball culture like over there? Man, it was beautiful, man. Uh, competition level was, like I said, it was extraordinary. Um, from the older guys, like I said, I grew up under guys like, rest in peace, Ali Moe, Shamgar, Kareem Reed, you know what I'm saying? These are guys, Reggie Freeman, these are guys that Gary Saunders, uh, like I said, Ron Arnold, the list goes on, man. It's like, so, like, being, like I said, a young guy and seeing those guys get after it all the time and just the way, like I said, the the the, the, the energy level was just, at, at that time, it was just, everything was in between the lines. So, you know what I'm saying? You, once you out there, you playing. It don't matter if it's, you know what I'm saying, for for free or just, once you in, when you playing and you putting them, and them, you lacing them up, you know what I'm saying? You're going at it, man. So just being around that, man, and seeing that drove me to be like, okay, this is what it is. Now, Douglas Projects, did you ever get to play in the Just Say No tournament? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, I won a couple championships Just Say No, uh, playing with the home team, of course. Um, like I said, Just Say No was one of the good tournaments for the youth back in the days because everybody from, like I said, people not familiar with the Children's Aid Society, which is like consist of Millbank, you know what I'm saying, Douglas. Um, you know, we had other programs at the time too on the east side. But um just say no was like you get all the talent, man, all the talent from Bronx, you, get, you know what I'm saying, Harlem, even guys coming from Brooklyn, you know what I'm saying, to come up there and what like I said, we, we used to call it the cage because it's like a, that's how the way it was set up like a cage. Right. So when you come in the cage, it was like you you in for a battle. So mm-hmm. just say no was legendary. That was a great court and a great tournament. Right, right. Now, yeah, definitely. At one point, at what point did you move to the Bronx? Uh, me and my mom moved to the Bronx in I want to say 1990. So I was nine years old, right, right around the time I started playing. Me and her moved to the Bronx. Where in the Bronx? Uh, we are from East Tremont, so right uh, what's oh, that? Yeah. Uh, right on the concourse. Oh, East you what Tremont. town? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, right, yeah. So when you were in the Bronx, where did you play ball? Oh, man, it was Cadet Corps. Um, I went, I traveled a lot to the, to the other side of the Bronx, the Kips Bay Boys and Girls Club. Mm-hmm. Um, I played at Burger, you know, over in Forster Projects. Um, oh, man. I mean, like I said, at that age, it was just wherever I can, wherever I can fit in, I was, that's where I was at, so. So aside from just say no, what other terms did you like playing in? Uh, citywide was a good tournament. Um, uh, we, we had a tournament uptown, man. It was sort of like a baby 55th called um, Blacktop. It was on 139th Street and Lenox Avenue. That was like one of the best tournaments I ever played in. I said talent from here to Queens, from, you know, me hauling the Queens. It was crazy. And like I said, everybody from the neighborhood, the games was packed. Competition level was packed, so that was definitely one of my favorites. Um, Dykeman, of course. Um, Hulk and Rucker was one of my, you know what I'm saying, favorites playing at 445th or at Millbank. 
like I said, because I'm from, you know, Lennox Avenue. So, you know, having my friends and family be able to come to the game was always fun. Um, Big Dog tournament was good, too. That was a tournament on 35th Street behind the hospital. I played in that when I got a little older. I won a championship with Ali Mo and them in there, too. So, um, yeah, those are just, those are just a few to sum it up right now. That was that was rocking. So then, when did when does Riverside come into play? Okay, uh, I played with Douglas Park because I grew up there. I played there for maybe like a year and a half, two years. So by the time I maybe was eleven, I went to Riverside. I, they had played actually played in Just Say No tournament, and um, it was funny. And um, me and a friend of mine, we, we was young. And we were like, like I said, we were like mesmerized by watching them because they, said they had the, the shorts, they had the sneakers, they had that camaraderie, you understand? That family's like, it was like family oriented over there. So um, watching them, I was like, all right, well, how, how can we get a part? So we, I mean, me and my friend, we was talking, we was like, yo, like who gonna go ask them, you know what I'm saying, about when trial says, he's like, come on, let's go over together. So we went together and um, we went up, talked to uh, Coach, at the time, Coach George, and we asked him what practice was, and he was like, uh, you know, how old are you guys? So he's like 10, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, I was 10 going on 11, but the next summer. So it was like, oh, my late birthday. He was like, when was I, how old are you? And I was like, I was tall. You know, you come Saturday at, you know, 8 o'clock, and you come at, you know, Saturday at 10 o'clock. Because my friend was like a year older than me. So um, that, that experience was like, I'll never forget that, like I said, because it was like a stepping stone I knew that was like a stepping stone for me to be where I want to get to as far as basketball. So Riverside was like that. Them opening the door, like they opened their doors over arms for me at that time was big, confidence wise. Mm. So then when does Kips Bay start? Okay. Well, Kips Bay actually played, actually played in a sectional storm in Kips Bay. We played, I actually played with Douglas the first two years there. Play with the home team Douglas, and this is how me and Kenny Satterfield end up being close because, like I said, I heard about his name being, you know, taking care of business in the Bronx, and I'm from Harlem in Manhattan. It was like, okay, he heard about me, so, you know what I mean? Going up there was always like a time, like, all right, I know I go up there, I got to have, you know what I'm saying, I got to have my A game rocking. So uh, that was, like I said, I happened two, two years in a row with Douglas, maybe, like you said, 12, 13, and then, the next couple of years, I played in sectionals with, uh, with Riverside. Mm. So, why did you choose Rice out of all these high schools in New York City? Man, that's a, that's a, that's one of the interesting stories I tell people. People who know, coming out of eighth grade, I went to Mount Carmel, um, to junior high school in the uh, east side of Harlem. Uh, you know, everybody knows it's like predominantly for basketball, so. Um, I came out of there eighth grade. I was number one in the tri-state area. So I could basically, you know, go to any high school that I, like, I wanted to go go to. And actually my first choice was Bishop Lachlan mm -hmm. because I wanted to go there because it was co-ed, you know what I'm saying? And I was coming from Catholic school, but it was girls' kids. I didn't want to go to old boys' school. So mm -hmm. he said, he's just being young. And you know, at the time, Coach Bob Lucky was there. He was recruiting me real heavy to go there. And like I said, as a coming in as a freshman, I wanted to play boss because I felt like I was that good. Like, you know what I'm saying? I can hold my own. Um, like I said, being at Mount Carmel with Coach uh, Lamar Dyson, like he he prepared us for, you know what I'm saying, high school, that high school level. So I felt like going anywhere I went, like I, I felt like I could have played at the varsity level. But um, Riverside Church was, uh, like I said, came into that decision making because you know, they were paying tuition back then. Mm -hmm. And um, they told me, well, nah, you're not a Brooklyn school, you're a Harlem kid, so you gotta stay within, you know what I'm saying? And they gave me choices, whether it was, it was the Sal, Rice, or, or, or Hollows. I couldn't even go to St. Ray's either, you know what I'm saying? I couldn't even go to St. Ray's either. So they were a gaucho school. Right, got, exactly, you know what I'm saying? And then like I said, Gary Caesar, you know what I'm saying, was like on me heavy, like I was it's still my guy to this day, but, um, you know, they gave me those three options. So I was just like, wow. I was like, <laughs> all right, you know, like I said, I'm going to just stay home and go to Rice. And then at that time, I didn't even know, like, all, all who was there inside of it and inside that building. It was just like one of those, like, all right, I'm going to go there because it's home. Like, I'm, you know what I mean? Let's go. You know what I mean? I always wanted to go to Rice, 
what I'm saying? Because like I said, I had older guys that was older than me, like like I said, Felipe Lopez, and Gary Saunders, and Jerry McCullough, and Ronald Arnold, and you know what I'm saying? The list goes on. Reggie Freeman, like I said, the list is, you know what I mean, crazy. So uh like it was like one of those like like, okay, if I'm gonna go somewhere, I'm gonna go that's that's home, you know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna go home and that's what I did. So let's take it back to 1994-95. You're an eighth grader. And you're playing with um, Mount Carmel. Talk about those days. Like, it seemed like you had guys like Andre Barrett, whom you later played with at Rice, yes, Julius Crossland, who's the assistant, who's the co-coach at Stevenson, yes, Tremaine sir. Singletary, who mm-hmm. played at Cardoza and won a chip in 99, Courtney yes. Fields, mm-hmm. who you also played with at Rice, yes. Majestic Map, yes. St. Rays, yes, and, of course, Kyle Cuff, who you also played with at Rice. Talk about that assortment of talent over there. It was ridiculous, man. Like I said, when I got to Mount Carmel in sixth grade, the guys that were ahead of me in eighth grade were Bernard Barrow, Jamal Fields, Edward King, Kitwana Rima, Tony, uh, Tony, is it Tony Edwards? Uh, like I said, these are guys in eighth grade. Seventh grade was Dari Wilson. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Kendall Manor. Uh, um, who else was in seventh grade uh, ahead of me? These are guys, all guys ahead of me. <clears throat> And it's only, it's only one team, I'm on come. There's no, at this time, it wasn't no, like, okay, you play Boston. It's one team, so, you know what I mean? Going up against those guys coming in sixth grade, it was like, well, if I can play against these guys and hold my own, like you said, it's, I can do, I can play against whoever. So, the talent level was just, it was just like a revolving doing there, man. Like you said, you look to your right, you look to your left, and it's talent, like, you know what I mean? It was just, it was fun. Like I said, that was some of the best times, like I said, those three years there was, like phenomenal, like on the court, off the court. Like I said, guys that I went to school with, like you said, all those guys, Andre Barrett, Kyle Cuff, these are still my brothers to this day. So it's like I said, with, that, with me, I like, you know what I'm saying? I like I like tight, tight knit chemistry, camaraderie, family, genuine love. So like being at Mont Carmel and then going to Rice, it was like that. It was like a, you know, easy fit for me. So as far as Bishop Locke, before we get into Rice, mm-hmm. now you were really – Willing to travel all the way to Fort Greene, Brooklyn, every day. Right, right, absolutely, absolutely. Listen, I, I don't listen. Like I said, being in New York was like traveling and nothing. So mm-hmm. getting on the train, I, I lived on the E train, so it had been a straight shot for me. Going from yeah. where I was at in the East Tremont, the D the, the train goes express from, from Tremont to Hunt Forty Fifth, and then it goes to Hunt Forty Fifth, Hunt Twenty Fifth, mm-hmm. and then Forty Fifth all the way down. You know what I'm saying? Fifty Ninth Street. So you know how that you know rush hours. Me, I would have been, I probably leave a little early, but I, I didn't care, you know what I'm saying? Because I knew over there, too, they had a lot of talent. You know what I'm saying? Terrence Watkins was, was in my grade, and that's a good friend of mine. So, like I said, me and him would have been coming in together. And then they said they had guys that was a little, a couple years ahead of me uh, that were already there, like Brian, you know, Brian Williams, of course. Um, you know, Reggie Jesse. Uh, they said uh, Mike Boynton ended up coming the year, the, the year after me. So, like I said, we would, me and him would play together. Teddy Mumford, we would all play together. Even though we played together in Riverside, we all played together on the same team in Riverside Church. So like that, like I, I built the bond with those guys playing AAU, you understand? So it was like one of those, like, okay, they good over there. I know they got the girls. Like I said, I, I'm a young, young, I'm thinking different. It's mm-hmm. like, I right. play ball in, like look next to me and I got a female right here. So it's like, you know what I <laughs> mean? So that, all that is like, it was like bottled up inside of me, man. And I, I was really trying to go there, but uh, Riverside I'm like, nah. <laughs> yeah. So talk, let's talk about 1995-96, your freshman year. What was the what was the camaraderie like on the freshman team? Well, I didn't play freshman. I played JV. And okay. that that like I let me and Kenny, me and Kenny said we laugh about this all the time because the freshman team was actually like stacked. You know what I'm saying? It was Kenny, like you said, Courtney Fields, uh Tavon Sills, they had my boy Derek Garter, aka Sliced. Um like I said, they like I said their freshman team was loaded bad. My, my my boy Kevin and Robin, Victor, all those guys were on that team, and I was coming in and they put me on JV with guys I didn't know. You know what I'm saying? It was just like and like I said a couple of the guys that were on the team ended up making Voss the next year with me, like Frank Temple um, and uh, Geronimo. But uh, it was just like coaching wise, it was just like. It wasn't good, man. And I was just, I, I was, I had a frustrating freshman year because it was just like, 
I felt like I said I wanted to play for us, but I knew the talent that was there in the building was crazy with Bevon and Chutney Gray and Tariq Kersey, Shalik Berry. These guys were seniors. So it's like, you know what, all right, I'll wait my turn. But put me down to freshman, that's how bad it was. I wanted to go back to play freshman just because, like I said, even around the city, the talent was all in freshman basketball. JV talent was like, you know what I mean? It was like mediocre. Uh, yeah, it was mediocre. So like I said, for me coming in as a freshman and then the type of game I had, it was like, like y'all got me playing this? Like, come on. Like, so like I said, it was a nip and tuck freshman year. So I mean, like I, I was thankful for it because like I said, it prepared me. But it was like, it was one of those, it was like, if I can go back, I definitely would either play varsity first or not put me with, you know what I'm saying, with my boys and freshmen. Set, yeah. yeah. So Nine, oh wait! So before we get to um that sophomore year, so you mm-hmm. played for Wally Gober, right? No, I played for uh, Bassey. Wally Gober was a freshman coach my freshman year. Ah, okay. So Kenny, he was Kenny and them coach. Mm, uh, okay. I played for Bassey. God bless his dad. He passed away, you know, a few years back. But uh, yeah, he was my he was my JV coach, head coach. Nice. nice. So at that time, um. This Rice wins the city and state championship. Did you get to see the championship game at Fordham when they beat Christ the King? Ran on the floor. <laughs> I was in the I was in the mush pit when they when Elo missed the layup at the buzzer. Yeah, we all I was right there front row. Were you like were you nervous as you know the dude Brian San Antonio? He threw up the the football pass. Right. Lamar Odom catches it, mm-hmm. and then when he when he throws the ball up, like what were you thinking at that moment? I, I, it was a game. I'm like, it's a game. Like I said, because it's like I said, LO, he caught it and he faked over the left shoulder and went right over the right shoulder. So it was like he was going to a strong. It, it, I, I, like I said, to this day, I still don't know how he missed it. I ain't even gonna lie. But like I said, when he, like I said, it's one of those, like, like you know how in movies, time stops. It was like one of those, like when he threw it and he caught it, it was just like, no, this ain't gonna happen like this. And mm-hmm. he let that thing go and it bounced and bounced and then came out. Like I said, that 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 feeling, like I said, even though I didn't play, that feeling was still edged in my brain because it was just like pure joy. And like you said, we knew, like, okay, this is the start of something big right here. Like, because like I said, beating Christ the King at that time with Speedy Claxton and Lamar Odom, Eric Barkley, like I said, we talking about three pros, you understand? So, and we knew they were going to be pros, you understand? Even in high school, we knew that's how good they were. That. Mm-hmm. So, at, for, just for the program, it was just a, you know, it was just huge, you know what I'm saying? So. Being there and seeing that, like I said, like I said, it was one of the things that drove me and drove us as far as the guys that were freshmen and sophomores that seen that that was on that team, but maybe didn't get as much playing time as they thought they should have. Drove us to be like, okay, well, we need our own. Excuse me. So then, sophomore year happens. You and Kenny Sapp make varsity. Andre mm-hmm. Bear is a freshman. Now, mm-hmm. talk about you know that season. Sophomore season was wild, man. Um, it was like I said, it was a roller coaster. Um, me, Kenny Satterfield, Courtney Fields were all sophomores that was playing for us. Andre Barrett came in as a freshman, played right away. Um, then we had, like I said, the guys that was juniors was Dari Wilson, Bronski Dockery, uh, Kendall Manor, Frank Temple, Anthony Glover. Um, Tone Brown, those Anthony Brown, those are those are our like our main guys. Oh uh, man, I felt like that was the most talented team I ever played on from top to bottom because one through twelve, it was just like you know what I mean. Pick your poison. I felt like we just didn't know how to mesh because it was that was our first time all playing together. Mo, you know what I'm saying? Having a coach different, you know what I'm saying? Attitudes and different things. Um, you know. We was kind of like I said, it was up and down, but we had, like I said, we had a we had a monster a monster game against St. Anthony's, and beat them up out in Jersey, man. Um, at that time, they were number one in the country. They had won sixty eight games in a row. You know, they had uh, three four All Americans, three All Americans was um, Sean Bruno, Devon Harrington, and Anthony Perry. Then they had Big Josh Moore. They like I said, they were loaded. They were loaded. And, uh, Going into that game, man, the newspapers, Daily News, ain't give us. They, they I mean, they, they just like completely like, oh, this is gonna be a, like they gonna get railroaded. They shouldn't even show up, and it was just like one of those like, wait a minute, like we all looked in the mirror, looked at each other like, like nah, like you know what I'm saying? We better than this, like you know what I'm saying? So you know, 
that week of practice leading up, man, was like a, like it was a, it was a it was a war every day, man, because guys knew Saturday night, you know what I'm saying? It's it's prime time. So going into that game, man, we had the ultimate confidence in ourselves that we was gonna win that game. Um, like I said, nobody that was in that locker room felt like, oh well, we was overmatched or oh yeah, well, nah, it was from from jump ball, it was like you know, we here in y'all in trouble, you know what I'm saying? And like I said, Kenny, that was Kenny Satterfield's like coming out party that game. And um, like I said, neither one of us started, you know what I mean? We both came off the bench and we ended up, like I said, playing big minutes. And, you know, like I said, we, that game, like I said, if I can get my hand on that film, man, and show people that game was ridiculous. It wasn't the overtime, like I said, packed house. I'm talking about standing room only. And it was just like, it was just us. And our little fans, like our parents, and that was it, man. And like I said, that feeling beating them and celebrating with our guys, man. Like I said, it was like it was like one of those like we know we could play with anybody in the country. We just had to do it consistently, you know what I'm saying? And that was the problem that season. So um let's talk AAU for a little bit. You guys, um, y'all played in the Bob Gibbons tournament and won. Like, how were those road trips with Riverside? So the, the, those guys, like I said, I'm still brothers with. Uh, Kenny Satterfield actually won MVP that year, and Bob Gibbons and I went on. I was on a tournament. Um, like I said, me and him, me and him on the court, we were like, you know, what I'm saying it was like Mike and Scotty, like that, and that camaraderie. Like whatever he lacked, I, I picked up, and vice versa. And like you said, at that time, he was like such a, he was such a dog. Like he pushed me. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, I was a dog, but. He was a dog that was like, and then seeing that, it was like, you know, it brought you, it brought a little extra juice out of you. And then, like I said, the, the talent on our team is, is ridiculous. Like Elvin Brown, um, um, Tavon, like I said, Tavon Sills. Um, I'm trying to think of the big guys. Big, uh, 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 big, um, big, uh, man, he went to um, Big Jason. Big Jason went to Malloy. Jason Gibson. Um, he was a monster down there for us. Big Steve Canal played with us. Shout out to Steve Canal. He played with us. Um, he was a big animal down there too. Um, like I said, my AAU guys were loaded, man. And, uh, like I said, coaching wise, it was just like top of the, it was top of the, top of the top, man. At that time, he was, Dave McCullough was our coach that year for that, for that trip. So you already know he was getting the best of the best, pressing and having fun, man, and going out after. And, you know, just enjoying life with the brothers, man. And, you know, coming the next day, AAU life, I would say, was like, it's definitely like fun because we enjoy each other's company. It was never animosity with anybody. It was never, you know, like, you know, we games we lost, we, we stayed up all night trying to figure out what we did wrong so we can correct it the next day. Like, I miss those days, you understand? Like I said, this is before film. So this is just us talking amongst ourselves about plays that happened and things we could have did. And, you know what I'm saying? Being truthful with each other, that's another thing. Like, you know, I sugarcoat with things and you know what I mean? Like I said, so all those all those times, man, I cherish them because like I said, those helped me become who I, you know, who I am today. So, okay, and you always brought this up in other interviews. What was your infatuation with Martin? Oh my goodness. Listen, at that time, <laughs> like you said, we, we we didn't have there was no uh, you know. Uh, DVR, so everything was live. And, MTV, uh, yeah. You know, we knew who Martin was from House Party and different movies and stuff like that, Boomerang. But him having his own show, it able, it was able to, he was able to see the real him and the different characters and just his, the way he just his whole aura was just like you know what I mean. It was just cool. Like I said as a kid, you seeing that, it's like damn, like you know what I mean. And he was just like I said to me. Like, he was hilarious, man. Like hilarious, like you know what I'm saying. Jerome, between Jerome, Uncle Otis, and I would say Kunk, uh, Dragonfly Jones. Those three characters, man. I can watch those. Like I can still watch them right now and laugh like I'm seeing it for the first time. Like I said, it was just a different feeling. I love Martin. Man. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. So let's talk about your junior year. Like, what was the um, what was the feeling like on that team? It was get back year now. Like I said, we coming off a year where we lost. So now it's like, like I said, the Anthony Glovers, the Dari Wilsons, the Bronx Dockeries, they're now seniors. 
So now it's like, okay, since the urgency is there with them, because it's like, okay, if I want to win. I want to go out as a winner. But like I said, as juniors now, we always had that mantra. It's like, listen, I don't care what we got to do, but as long as we get in our Ws. So at this time, I think everybody started sacrificing, you understand? We knew Aunt, Aunt Glover was our guy. We knew this. You know what I'm saying? Dyree was our glue guy, so he could do everything. Bronski was our defender, but that can score. You know what I'm saying? Everybody knew their roles, I should say. And Mo, you know, Mo, like having that year, our sophomore year, and having a roller coaster year, guys vowed to get better, like individually, so we can come together as a unit and be better. And I think the whole team did that. We came in that junior year, we were on a mission. It was just like one of those, like, last year is not happening again this year, no matter what. You know what I'm saying? We were like, we, the, the leadership from the top all the way through, it was just, you know what I mean? It was just flawless and, you know what I mean? We went and we had a great, we had a great junior year, actually. Like, like that's a real underrated year that people don't talk about. Cause like, we talk about our senior year a lot because of what we did, but uh, my, my junior year was, was real good, man. We, like I said, we won it, city and state, you know what I mean? And like I said, the playing time was, you know, from my sophomore year to junior year, you want to see your playing time going up. And I felt like it went up, but I felt like on the when the games mattered, I was on the court. So that's all that mattered to me. You know what I'm saying? So it was like one of those, like, okay. You know what I mean? Like I said, it don't matter if I was getting six points. If I can contribute and be in the game as far as when when stuff is, like, when it's real and I can be in there impacting the game, then that's all I cared about. You know what I'm saying? So, like I said, my junior year prepared me for, you know what I'm saying, my senior year. So our junior year was was great, definitely. Let's talk about, you know, now your senior year and beating Christ the King back to back years. Like how how was how was it? Well, at that time, like I said, it, it was Christ the King, St. Raymond's was like our two, you know what I'm saying, like our two guys that we you knew when you played them, you had to you had to lace up your, you know, you had to lace them up tight and, you know, be be ready. Um beating them both both in a in the city championship was like, like I said, those guys we played, some of those guys on that team was on our A team as well, Zach Williams, you know what I'm saying, Omar Cook, Willie Poole, um, Mark McCarroll. Like I so said, these are guys that we know. Like like, I said, like we all, like I said, you know how it is when you're growing up as far as AAU and you're growing up every year, and especially in, in New York City, like you're going to be around these guys 24-7, so you know guys. So it was like, you know, not only for ourselves that, but it was just like one of those like, we can't let we can't let rice down like the tradition. We can't let that down. So like, you know what I mean? Like you said, the ball was set my freshman year. So now it's like now we're seniors, we on the way out. We I'm not gonna be, you know what I'm saying, the guy that lost to Christy King as a senior when as a freshman we beat him, as a junior we beat him, and now as a senior, like you know what I'm saying? So it was like one of those. So like we was like we was laser, laser focused our senior year, man, as far as national scale, because it was like we felt like the city was ours. We felt that way. And we wanted the whole country, man. We like that's how that's how we looked at it. So we didn't say zero in on like Christ the King St. Rays and that was it. Now it was like, all right, we got these two, but okay, we want y'all or, you know what I'm saying? Like good counsel or you know what I'm saying? Like it was like what wherever it was at, that's what we wanted to be in. You know what I'm saying? That was that model that year I seen it. It was it was insane. Talk about your whole four years as, at Rice as a whole. Like, you played, like, as an athlete and as a student. Because mm-hmm. a lot of people may not know, like, there was always a brotherhood at the school. Absolutely. Listen, like I said, that Rice, those four years in that building made me, like I said, uh, the man I am today. Um, like I said, going through just ups and downs. And like I said, knowing when, whenever you fall, it's a brother next to you that's going to pick you up, you know what I'm saying, let you know, listen, you think you got it bad. And then, now like I said, you're learning other guys' stories, what they're going through. That builds you up as a, as a person because it's like, well, maybe my situation ain't so bad. You know what I'm saying? He got it like this, and he's coming to school every day. He's getting 85s and 90s. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, why, why are you not doing it? You understand? So it's basically, like I said, it was motivation, man. Every year it was motivation all around you. The guys was like, the atmosphere was just laid back and fun. You know what I mean? And it was just like, like I said, it was just, it was like going going from home to going to home. You understand? It was like, it was like that. That's what it felt like. You know what I'm saying? With your, going around your brothers. That's all it was like. Your mother ain't there no more. You just around your brothers and you having fun, man. And 
enjoying each other, man, for, like you said, the majority of the day, because once you're there, you're there, like you said, you're there all day until four o'clock, five o'clock, it's time to go home after practice and go home for a little while and then you're right back at it again. So those four years was, was monumental. And like I said, even today, like I said, we still all tight, man. And that's the thing that I love, man, that we could call each other and speak to each other, and, you know what I mean? And everything is everything, you know what I mean? It's, it's all love. That thing is like, that's priceless to me. Now, you then went on to Riverdale Baptist for your post-grad year. Yes, Talk sir. about the quote-unquote prep school ex experience. Well, man, that was wild because I was indecisive on on what I wanted to do. I was like indecisive. I was on. I wanted to go to uh, uh, you know, I wanted to go to D one, but I knew my grades wasn't right as far as my SATs. So it was either JUCO at that time or uh, a prep school year, and I was just like, I know if I go to JUCO at this time, my clock is going to start. So I was just like, Nah, I know I fucking I got one more year in me where I can get me a school and you know get this thing right. I go to Riverdale. I was actually supposed to go to Newport News, you know what I'm saying, out there in Maryland. But uh, once um, I, I actually graduated from Rice, so like I didn't have my diploma, but I walked and I did all that. I didn't know that you couldn't do that to go there. Coach Cheney at the time, I was the head coach there. Once he found that out, he was like, well, damn, I can't take you here because, you know, you graduated. So... He got on the phone right then and there. Like, so I got my bags in the office with him. And like, I'm booked to go here. He hit and got on the phone and called the head coach that was at the Riverdale Baptist at the time, uh, Walter Webb, and, and uh, told him my situation, told him my story. And they was able to work it, work it to where it was like, okay, he can play over here with us. Came to pick me up. And I, like I said, that's how I got to Riverdale. It wasn't like I knew, I didn't even, never even heard of Riverdale Baptist before. Me, you know what I'm saying? Him, him calling that coach and telling him, I got a kid for you. And uh, once I got there, man, it was like, that was like my second home, man. They embraced me right away. Um, I'm talking about from the principal on to the, um, you know, to the baseball players, man. It was, that year was, man. And I, and, and, and I felt like that was my coming out year because I felt like I was always, you know, around guys that were, you know, Andre Barrett's, Kenny Satterfields, those guys are, you know what I mean, all Americans. And I felt like I always flew on the radar playing with those guys and it was cool. But I felt like once I was at Riverdale, man, it was like, okay, it's your time to blossom, man. What, like, what, what you got? And I, I went out there and turned it up, man. And, uh, it was just like I said, it was, it, was, it was good for me on and off the court, man, because I, I was able to grow as a person uh, you know, I was able to get more mature and look at life different. Uh, like I said, my first time being away from home. Um, so it was like one of those, I, you know, meeting new people, meeting family. Uh, well, not me, meeting family that I, I haven't met before. Mm -hmm. so it was like, it, everything was new. It was just basically got to start, start over for me, like a breath of fresh air. And, you know, I embraced it and, and took the bull by the horns. So talk about, you know, playing for Mo Hicks at Rice. Like, how was he compared to any other coach that you ever had? Well, he was like I said, he he prepared he prepared you mentally because he, he made sure that, you know, like he always he was the first one to told us the game is, you know what I'm saying, twenty percent, you know, physical and you know what I'm saying, eighty percent mental. And I used to be like, What are you talking about? And he used to be like, you know what I'm saying, once you understand the game and think the game, then you know, everything else will come easy. Um, so he 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 got us he got us on that mindset early to you know what I'm saying like you said share the ball move without the ball uh, defensive principles was like was a one like you said one foot in the paint when the ball is away uh, you know ball is one step away hand the passing lane one one pass away just like I said just just very detailed and uh, but like I said uh, he he was great man because he let you play he let you know what I'm saying if you if you play defense and you did the things you needed to do, he'd let you play, man, and uh, have some fun, man. So I appreciate him for that. So you wound up at American University the first year of college. Mm -hmm. Talk about your time there, because I know it was short and you didn't get to play. What what happened during that time? Well, let me rewind back a little bit to 
I made the Capital Classic game, played in that game in D.C. Mm. Um, but I played that game with a torn meniscus and didn't know it. Mm. And uh, listen, I told my meniscus in the state finals against Newport, Riverdale versus Newport, we up 18 points at halftime. Right before the half, I tried to chase the point guard down for a block. and came down, but I didn't like come down funny. It was just like a little tweak, so I think it was a cramp in my knee. So right before we go to halftime, like I said, we up 18 points. And now my knee swells up like a, like a watermelon. So I'm in the locker room, I'm like, mm. my knee is swollen. They, so my coaches, everybody's like, oh, what's gonna happen? I'm like, I don't know. So now, like I said, now the halftime's over. Now I'm walking back to the court. To the court. We, we playing in Cold Field House in Maryland. So the walk from the locker room to the court is kind of like long. And it's just like, I'm like dying. I'm like dragging my leg, but I'm trying to like, you know, tough it out. Cause I'm like, I don't want people to be like, well, what happened to him? So we come out, start the third quarter and I can't move, man. And they seen that. So rather than me, rather than me hurt the team, you know, I had to come out and they end up walking us down and beating us. And we lost mm -hmm. that game. So now I go home. And I just iced my knee because, like I said, at this time, I never had an injury in my life. So I go home and I just ice my leg. Swelling goes down after a few days. My leg is fine. I'm like, okay, I'm good. So at this time now, I made, I find out I make the Catholic Classic practices maybe a couple weeks away. So now I'm trying to strengthen my, strengthen, get my, get back in, in the rhythm of playing again because I knew, you know, this is a big stage. So I played, I, I, I got through it. And now, I, I told my coach at American, like, yo, something's wrong with my knee. I don't know what's going on. This is, you know what I'm saying? So he like, okay, I'm set you up an MRI. And so he set me up an MRI on right down the street from the campus. So I get the MRI and the doctor says, like, you telling me this, like about like being torn, but I didn't have to get surgery. So I was just like, word. And I was like, okay. My mom ended up calling me and saying, well, I got you in a second opinion. You gotta come to New York. So I go to New York now. Get the, I go to see Dr. Clark. He was the he was the Knicks doctor at the time. And all right, he like, oh listen, your meniscus is torn. He actually telling me, he telling me about the knee and everything. So I'm learning stuff. I'm like, when am I gonna be able to play basketball again? He said, Well, you're gonna be down for three, four, about three, it's about four weeks as far as rehab, as far as like after post-surgery, and then you can go and start rehabbing. So I got the surgery in June, that June going into my freshman year of American. So I got the whole summer basically to rehab. So I come back, we start August, we got, you know, preseason workouts. Now, the coach that recruited me, Art Perry was the head coach, got fired. Mm -hmm. Jeff Jones, that was at, he was at Virginia, head coach. And he came to American. So he came with his guys, the, 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 one of the recruited, recruiting coaches that recruited me, Kevin Brodus, he was assistant at the time at American. He was the only staff member that stayed. And I stayed because of him. We, we, we had a good freshman class coming in that year. Me, it was a kid, Deion Saunders, uh, Janaeus Truon, and we had a transfer, my man Steve, that was at Coastal Carolina. And then and so we already had the play of the year in the conference and uh, another you know, second team on conference in Tim Washington. Play of the year we had with this Patrick, Big Pat. And also like the mesh with everything, I felt like the CAA conference, like we was gonna, we was gonna make some noise. So now I'm still rehabbing, getting right, getting right. Practice starts. I get a letter from the clearinghouse, NCA clearinghouse, saying oh, I'm under investigation and this and that. So I'm like, oh my goodness, all right, whatever. Like I said, I didn't do anything wrong. I'm like, everything's going to be all right. Season start now. I can't play. I only can practice. So now I'm, I'm able to just sit on the bench. So now I missed maybe the first six or seven games. So season started in November. Now, yeah, November, so I'm sitting out. Uh, now December comes, my mom gets a letter from the clearinghouse. She calls my room. She said, well, a letter from, you know, NCA is here. So I'm just like, at this time, I still ain't know. I'm like, all right, we'll open it and say what it says. Tell me what it says. So I'm on the phone with her. She's reading it out loud. She's telling me, this is the first line was, oh, sorry. When I heard the sorry, I was just like, I dropped my head. She read it, she finished reading it, you're not, you know, qualified, this and that. So now I'm just like, damn, now like I'm hurt because it's like, like I said, the guys I came in with, I felt like that we had, like I said, chemistry and I felt like we was gonna do work. So now now I'm just like, at this time, I'm just puzzled because I'm like, what now? I go to the coaches, they tell me, well, okay, well, you know, you have to go the Juco route, you know what I'm saying? And um, 
So at this time, like I said, this is December, it's mid season. At that time, I felt like they they didn't really they they cared, but they really didn't because it's like now it's like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't recruit you, you know what I'm saying? Like, you ain't clear, that ain't my problem type of thing. We got a wow. season, we got a season to worry about. And that was they didn't say that to me, but that was the vibe I got. Like nobody helped me, you know what I'm saying? So it was like, mm-hmm. oh, yeah. so now I come home. You know what I'm saying? I come home my second semester from January till June. And I'm just home, not doing nothing. No, like you know, I'll, I'll hoop every, every once in a while, but I'm now I'm just like when I when I'm gonna do. This is when I get the call to go to Junior College in Arkansas, uh, by the uh, good guy uh, Dave Anwar. He was assistant coach there, and Doc Sadler was the head coach there. At uh, at that time, it was West Stark, and then when like in the middle of the year, they changed it from from West Stark to the University of Fort Smith of Arkansas. So. Um, and uh, uh, a teammate of mine that was on American with me, Charles Pringle, he's from Philly. He was a big man. He ended up going to the Arkansas Junior, junior College first. So me and him was real tight. Like, even to this day, we were tight. And he, he was phone conversations. He like, Kev, I'm telling you, you'll love it out here. But me, I'm like, Arkansas, like, you got to be kidding me. Like I said, at this time, I'm 19 years old, a kid. I'm like, I'm not going away across the country. You know what I'm saying? Nah, so. Like I said, that process was just, like I said, I had Texas, I had Juco, all the Juco, Texas, all the Juco's from Texas was hitting me, Howard, uh, uh, all those guys out there was hitting me. I'm just like, nah, man, I'm good. And uh, I ended up giving it a shot to go to Arkansas. I went on a visit and got out there and then hit it off right away with Coach Doc. It was a guy, it was a point guard that was there before me from Brooklyn, New York. Rest in peace to uh, Chris Sandy. Um, he went there the year before me, and I'm talking about he was a point guard and tore it up, man. So like battling like that that my whole time I went to my visit, he was there, and like I said, we all them guys doing was hoop. That's all they did was hoop. So in my mind, that's all I wanted to do. I'm like these guys like that. This this gym right here is like it was like a sanctuary because like it was right on campus, and we had the key 24 seven. So it was like. It was like a hot box, you sweat it. It was, it was, but it was a good workout. And once I left there, I knew, okay, yeah, I'm, uh, that's why I want to come. I come here. And, um, from there, I, I come back for the season. It was like I was homesick. It was one of those like a reality hit. You understand? Now it's like, damn, this, this is it. And you know, just getting on the bus and going back up, back up the road to New York. I got, you got to take two planes. I was like, oh man, so like. <laughs> Like I said, the season is just starting. It was just like one of those, like, I was still, I was a little out of shape. I'm not going to lie. I was definitely out of shape. And uh, it was just like the first 10 games, we were five and five. It was like, man, we had a three-week break during Christmas. And that's when everything changed. You know what I'm saying? I came home, spoke to my grandmother. She's like, oh, I told her what I wanted to do. I want to come home. I want to to be there. And she's like, well, God gave, you know, my grandma was very, she was very religious. She's like, God gave you a gift. You know what I'm saying? You know, up until this time, you know, you've been you've been marvelous doing what you need to do. She's like, God put you here for a reason. And I'm just like, you know what? All right, and then knows best. I get back on the plane because I wasn't gonna come back. I was I was just gonna stay in New York during Christmas break. Like I ain't going back. That's how I was, that's how I was feeling. But I got back on the plane and went out there and right away coach coach doc told us, like, listen, first half of the season, I'll let y'all have it y'all way. Now the second half is gonna be my way or the highway. So I was like, one of those, okay. Mm. And, and when I tell you, I was in the best shape of my life. He got me in the best shape of my life. It, it was like, I, I felt like I can run a marathon. That's how in shape I was. Strength, mm. this endurance, everything. And then the basketball wise, it was just like I said, my, my jump shot at that time had was like, that was the first time I ever seen a shooting machine and been around a shooting machine. So I before that, up until my career before that, I never was in a gym where we had a shooting machine there. It's like, so once I got that, it was like I had this, like oh, I can do this 24-7. I'm not even gonna lie to you, Dave. That was all I did, second half of the season. Was cool. <laughs> I was in the gym all the time. Uh, if I wasn't in the gym, I was in my room cooking, eating, and I chill, watch watch a game or something. And I'm right back in the gym. And I go, okay, like I said, it was me and the kid Jared Hart. He ended up going to Kansas State. He was a sophomore that year. I was a freshman. Um, mm. He ended up going to Kansas State. 
it was me and him in the backcourt. And uh, he played, it was crazy because we had a connection because he played in high school with Joe Johnson. You know what I'm saying? And then, I, you know, I played with Kenny. And then those two guys played in this McDonald's All-American game together. You know what I'm saying? Ended up coming out in the same draft. So, like, that that high school draft, that uh, class of 99, like I said, that was a that was a real good class, man. When you sit back and look at that class, it's like, wow. You know what I'm saying? They got some like some real hoopers in that class. So um, yeah, man, being out in Arkansas was like it was a crazy experience, but basketball wise, I would I felt like that was definitely like where I like said, Okay, this is what I wanna do. I wanna I wanna be a pro. I couldn't be a pro. Not what I wanna do, is what I can be. Like I felt at that time I could be a pro, so yeah, that was that was the end of. Well, I didn't get my year back from the NCAA, so technically, when I went to JUCO as a freshman, so that 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 was actually my freshman year as far as playing basketball. Okay, so then you came back home to Monroe College. Yeah. Um, was Book a part of that coaching staff? Absolutely. Uh, that was my sophomore year now. So, um, Coach Doc, I went to him after the season was over and told him, you know, like said. My grandmother time wasn't feeling well. She was sick. I, mean, I just want to be back home, close to home, where I could be able to see her. And he was just, he was like, no problem. Like, where do you want to go? So I'm sitting in the office and I'm just thinking. And then for some, I, I didn't know anything about Book being there or none of the guys there. I just knew it was close to home. Like I said, I'm, I'm, a, like I said, I'm, I'm a Harlem slash Bronx kid. My road right down the street from from the, my Bronx house. And I'm just like, Monroe. So he's like, okay, you know the coach over there? So at the time before, I knew Coach Jackson was there. He was the head coach. He had Coach Mike Nurse, I'd say Francis and all those guys. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, okay, yeah, Coach Jackson is there. My coach pulls out the big college book, puts it out, opens it, calls Monroe. He's like, oh, I got a kid for you that wants to transfer. So. I'm thinking he's talking to Jackson the whole time. So I'm sitting across, I'm sitting across from him. He's talking and he's like, um, you know, kid from New York City, da da da. He can't like, play with me out there. The freshman, he's gonna be a sophomore. Uh, Kevin Bell. So uh, he's on speaker. It's like a, it was like a silence, like a dead silence now. And it's like, oh, Kevin Bell from Rice High School. It was like one of those. So now I'm just like, I'm just like, you know, I give him a little smile. And he's like, yeah, Kevin Bell from Rice High School. Like, okay, yeah, I know who he is, this and that. So he's like, yeah, he's thinking about coming to your school. So it was actually funny. This is like a, this is like a Monday or Tuesday, and I was actually like um, booked to come home that Thursday. So he was like, "On um, Thursday when you come in, we got open open gym. You can just come in, like come in and hoop." So I remember coming off the plane, and had my bags and everything. I got all my bags. I go straight there. I'm getting there. First person I see is uh, Kingsley Edwards, and I'm like, and like I said, me and him got a connection from like say AAU days. Playing up in his tournament, um, and in, in his neck of the woods, UDC. Um, so like I said, that was with my brother, and I seen him. It was like first thing I said to him, like, "Yo, you, what can't you go in?" He like, "Yeah, I'm going in." I'm like, "Oh man!" So I go in the corner, put my bags down. Ryan Williams coming through the door. I said, "What you doing here?" He like, "What you doing here?" So we now it's all of us three. So now it's like, wait. Ryan, you coming in too? Like, yeah, so we were like basically all, we were basically all transferring in, but I didn't know this. Mm-hmm. So now who comes in the door next? Well, man, you were just, man, <laughs> like I said, our faces was like, like we were like little kids, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, wait, book you, book you assistant? It was, and it was like, from then on, it was like, I'm on board. Like, like and I, and first thing I thought, thought well, was like, and God, I made the right decision because I knew I was surrounded by some, you know what I'm saying, guys that I knew was going to be like, oh, listen, he was on that type of time that I was on. So, like I said, being being around Book Man 24-7, Book pulled some stuff out of me that I didn't know I had, you know what I'm saying? And man, that, like I said, that that year was, like I said, phenomenal because leading up to that, we was, uh, Rice, I mean, Monroe was, uh, uh, I want to say D2. It was like, you know, so that was the first year of being in, in JUCO of Division One, And uh, the administration, you know, they, their administration, they didn't believe in the beginning, you know. So, but we told them, like, listen, this is going to be a year that, you know what I'm saying? So I'm, I say by the third game of the season, they knew, like, oh, nah, this is going to be a special year. And uh, we just carried that on that year, man. And 
end up coming out, winning, winning the region. Like I said, we had battles with Westchester that year. They was in our division, of course. <laughs> Westchester, they were good. Listen, listen. The battles we had with them was legendary. That's why I said I get the film because battle, battle, battles. And uh, once we came out of that, once we beat them to come to go to the regionals, which was in South Aiken, Georgia, like, like it was crazy. It was man going down there for that was crazy too. But uh, like backwards Georgia. Yeah, man, it was. Like, <laughs> I never even heard this place. I'm like, where are we going? <laughs> Those two, we had to play. We had to win two games out there. Mm -hmm. And once we did that, it was just like it was like a big relief because it was like because I went to Hutch my freshman year with Arkansas. You know what I'm saying? We went to Hutch and I lost in the semifinals. You know what I'm saying? So my whole goal was. I gotta get back to Hutch. I don't care. You know what I'm saying? I don't care. Like I said, Kingsley and Ryan the same way. Like, oh no, nah. listen, we good. Let's go. So that year was another year where it was just everything fit, man. And coach Jeff Bruce there was the head coach. That was his first year being head coach there, and he's still the head coach there now. And that was how many years ago? I don't want to give my age away, but you know what I'm saying? That was his first year being head coach, man. And he's still the head coach there now. So that goes to show you the type of you know coach he is and guy he is. So you know. Shouts to Coach Brewster and Brooke. Oh. And Brooke. <laughs> so then you go to Bowie State. Now, let's talk about the CIAA mm -hmm. and the whole experience and being in a, at a black college. Like, talk about that experience. I guess I got my hat on, man. I don't know if you can see my support. <laughs> yeah, I see I'm it. Part, I'm always supportive, man. But Bowie, it's another thing, man. I, was, I wasn't slated to go there either. It was one of those... After the NCAA thing happened in American, I did that year back, so my uh, clock started academically. So once I left Monroe, I only had one year of Division One to play on the court, and I had two in Division Two. So that's why I was like, me being a ball, I'm like, I need my two. I want, you know what I'm saying? So I find me a D two. You know what I'm saying? So now at this time, it's like, damn, I'm like, where I'm gonna go? End up working out. I was working out at St. Raymond's. And um, my sister coach at the time, I was at Bowie, Fred, he was, um, came up, you know, there was some coaches there, excuse me, he came to see us play, he was watching. So after the game, after we played, we, he came over to me and was like, um, um, Kevin, how many years of eligible you got left? And I'm so I'm just like, you know what I mean? I said, I got one for you know, college for division one and two for division two. So he paused, he used to always have a toothpick, he took his toothpick out. So now I'm reading his jacket and I'm seeing it saying Bowie State, so I'm just like, you know what I mean? But in my mind, I'm like, oh, it wasn't like ringing a bell. So he like, oh, so like, what would you think about coming to Bowie State? So I looked at him, I ain't gonna lie, I looked at him like, I just laughed like, like you know what I'm saying? Like, what conference y'all in? And when he said the CIAA, I was like, like, wait a minute. Like, so now I knew, like I said, I knew those colleges, Winston Salem State, the you know, Johnson C. Smiths, the Shores. So I'm like, that's a, that's a good ass conference. Like, you know, so excuse my friend, I mean, it's a good conference. Next thing you know, I look up, I go visit. And I, like I said, me, I, I've never been on that campus. Even, even with me being in Maryland before, going to Riverdale Baptist, I never stepped foot on Bowie State's campus or anything. I, like I said, I didn't know anything about them. So when I got there, man, it was like the band is playing. And like I said, it's just all black people. It's just like, like I said, I'm looking around. I'm just like, oh, this is home. Like I, I had got chills walking into the game when I was coming, in, walking into the game. And they were playing Virginia Union, which is our, our like which, which is our uh, our rivalry. And like I said, seeing the, the the interaction, just the energy, I said, "Oh my goodness!" I looked at my coach. And I said, "Where do I sign?" You know what I'm saying, like right there. So <laughs> that that experience, it was like I said, it was like it was like love at first sight type of thing with, with me and Bowie. It was like I knew like this is where this is where I wanted to be. It was like stomp the yard, basically. Right, exactly, exactly. Like I said, you just like I said, you just being around everybody that looked like you. It was <laughs> for me, you know what I'm saying? Because it was like I never, I was always around, you know, diversity. You know what I mean? So being going in, seeing everybody look like me, like you said, it was just like it was like you you, you could be yourself. It's like I don't gotta, you know what I mean? I don't gotta walk on eggshells. Nah, be yourself, man. And like I said, it was it was it was wonderful. Wonderful. With all this talk of, you know, coaches recruiting, um, um, coaches from HBCUs recruiting black players, like, what would you tell a kid that 
you know, is being recruited by a Division II CIAA school or one of the conferences in Division I that's the HBCU, what would you tell them about the black college experience? Well, first I would tell them, except for my experience, I had a great time. I would tell them to at least look into it, you understand? Because, <clears throat> like I said, me and my guys were talking the other day about in Rice, when we came out of Rice, like we going to a black college and uh, getting recruited by a black college was kind of like we didn't we didn't know anything about it. You understand? It was like we looking at the North Carolinas, the Dukes, the Kentuckys, right? At least because that's just what basketball wise, like that's what we know. But uh, going through my experience, man, and seeing everything, man, if you're good, and I say good, I mean good enough where you feel like you can be a pro, they're gonna see you and find you regardless. <laughs> you understand? So you go into a black college and the coach is going to let you, you know what I'm saying, have the keys. And you go there and, like we said, first of all, the fit got to be right. So this is, it's just not to say, okay, well, you know, I'm just going to go to this school just because of the black college. You got to, you know, like I said, weigh your options. But if the coach is there and you feel connected with the coach as far as, oh, yeah, he's going to get me better as a, as a man and on the end of, end of the gym, and you got guys around you, like I said, it could be three guys in the top 25 that say, we're going to all go here together. Like how, you know, Jalen Rose and Weber and them did it when they went to Michigan. You get three guys, four guys to say, yo, what's up, man? Let's, do, let's, make, let's make this happen and go to a, a HBCU, whether it's a CIAA or, like we said, in Division I. That will change the landscape of everything because in this, in this age, we now we're in this day age, you know, it's like a, people will follow, you know, they follow, you understand? And the media coverage, social media coverage behind that will be so big that now kids will go, okay, this ain't, you know what I'm saying? This ain't bad. Like, and like I said, it ain't, you know what I'm saying? Because it's, at the end of the day, you're playing basketball. You're, doing, you're still doing what you love to do. Mm -hmm. You're just doing it at now at a school that's not high up as Duke or North Carolina basketball-wise. But like, what means more to you as far as being like, your, your moral compass? Like, you know what I mean? Like your background, your, your, you know, like, so it's like, you gotta weigh your options basically. So for me, I'll tell the young guys, just give it a shot. Like if you don't genuinely love it or want to do it, don't do it. Don't just don't do it just to do it. Do it because it's like, oh, this is the right thing to do. It's the right fit. Throughout my career, what I noticed and things that happened, doors closed and other doors open. When I went through that other open door, it was like God sent because it was like, I'm meant to be here. Like, you know, and that's how I looked at everything. It's like, like I get down on about something and it's like, well, you know what? You know what I mean? I'm doing what I love to do. People around me is good. I'm winning. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, so it's like, I'm happy. Like at the end of the day, I'm happy. Like, you know what I mean? I'm not at North Carolina. Okay, cool. But I'm still hooping. I'm still doing what I need to do. And, you know, getting it and getting it rocking. So like I said, the young guys, man, they, they y'all hold the they hold the key, they hold the power. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, they do. You know what I'm saying? Because those guys are knocking on your doors. They banging on your doors. So like I said, what you gonna do with that power? Mm -hmm. That's how I tell them what you're going to do with that power. You know Absolutely. I mean? mm -hmm. So this is one of the questions that I love to ask all my guests. Mm -hmm. If you could go back to, say, 1999, what would you tell Kevin Bell at 18 as he's going through his senior year at Rice? I would tell him to... Uh, I would tell him to be patient. You know, follow follow his heart, follow your heart, and uh, you know, put your head down and work, man. Um, that's one of the things, like I said, getting out, like I said, being around, like I said, the Kenny Satterfields and the Andre Barrys, is the work they put in to get there to where they got to. You know, uh, people ask me all the time, like how good they were, and I just like, listen, y'all have no idea. You know what I'm saying? The work they put in to be that good, you understand? So, just the work ethic, man, and like we said, you know. Doing things, doing things, and with a purpose, and like I said, patience, man. So that, those are the those are the things. Those are the keys. I would say, I would tell a, a younger Kevin, <laughs> don't be so quick to judge and rush into things, man, and take your time. Hmm. So, final question: What's next in the future for Kevin Bell? Well, I'm actually trying to actually go back to school and get my bachelor's degree. Um, I want to, you know, get into the coaching thing as far as uh, with the youth. Um, I feel like that's my calling. Um, um, so I'm just 
you know, it's taking a day by day, but I, I have some things lined up. Um, you caught me on guard with that question. Uh, <laughs> I, said I, uh, I, I wanna, you know, I wanna definitely um, get it to where I can, you know, get my status so I can get into, uh, you know, an NBA, you know, building, you know, and, you know, whether it's the, you know, skills department, you know, scouting department, I feel like I can definitely, you know, bring that, bring those tangibles to a team, to a college, to a high school. So, like I said, I'm just getting, I just want to get my foot up, get my feet up the door, and I want to go back to school and get the, get that, get the ball rolling with that. And, uh, you know, because that's a promise that I've, I've promised myself is that I would, you know, get my bachelor's when I was younger, promised my mom. So, these are certain things that I was like, I'm still holding, holding true to myself. And, uh, this time now, man, with everything going on with the pandemic, and COVID, you know, just, you know, the protests and everything. It's just, like I said, to me, I feel like it's time to, you know, push the culture forward and, you know, do the things that I know I, I, I'm, I was put on this earth to do. So, yeah, I'm starting to start with this, going back to school. Mm, I hear that. Well, Kev, thank you for coming on to share your story. <laughs> um, I enjoyed your testimonial, and I wish you nothing but the best moving forward. And even hey, with your, getting your degree. Hey, I appreciate you so much, man. Hey, the work you're doing, man. I've watched you for a few years now, man. And I'm very proud of you, man. I just want to tell you that. I'm very proud of you. Keep doing what you're doing, man. The things you do, like I said, the, the articles and stuff you post and, and the, listen, all that stuff is noticed, man, and, and, and welcome, man. The guys love you. I'm telling you that because we talk about you, and you know, so... Man, it, it means a lot for, for us to, you know, like I said, support you and you doing it for the culture, man. So, man, like I said, keep doing what you're doing, man. And like I said, whenever you need me, I'm here, man, for real. So, My thank guy. You for me, man. Thank you. Of course. Yeah. Well, everybody, this is episode 34 of Hoops Talk with Dave's Joint. For all my race raiders out there, for all my Bowie State people out there, and for those from Monroe College, check this out on Facebook, YouTube, and IGTV. Stay blessed, stay safe. Peace. Peace.